All right, we are live. Hello. Yay. All right, Dr. Katie, today is macro day. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm so excited. Most of the time I'm the one that's talking more, so I'm excited for whatever you're going to present to us. And, and I get to ask the questions this time. <laughs> Oh, well, let's do, let's do our intro. So uh, everybody, hello, I am Teresa Paganini. I own Love Yourself Lean. I am a health coach, mindset coach, emotional eating coach, weight management specialist. I don't even know what to call myself, but uh, I help people that struggle with obesity as a result of disordered eating um, and having disordered relationships with food. And so I work from a position of mindset. Once you truly believe in your own worth, once you truly understand how to love yourself at every size, you'll make yourself a priority and do what it takes to get yourself to your ideal size. And so that's where I uh, I come from. And I am so thrilled every other week to be able to um, come in partnership with one of my buddies, Dr. Katie. So handing it off to her. Hey, everybody. Uh, Dr. Katie Schnell with Inclusive Natural Medicine. I'm at my office today for the Zoom, so it's cool to have that background. I practice in Chandler. I'm a naturopathic physician, and I focus in a lot of gut health, a lot of weight loss, hormone optimization. Basically, Teresa and I exchange patients when uh, they need blood work and um, other sort of like medical needs. And then when I've got people that need help with what to eat and how to feel about themselves, I send them over to Teresa. So... Uh, yeah, love what, yeah, love the partnership. So fun. And this week we are talking about macros. There's a lot of information, a lot of misinformation on the internet in general about everything that has to do with health, but especially when it comes to diet, knowing what's right for you and right for your body can be really, really confusing and really difficult to understand on your own. So that's why we started Blunt and Bias to help you make up your own mind about yourself. Um, how should we kick it off? Let's talk about, well, you start and then, or should I ask for a very basic intro? Cause you know how I love to jump in without any sort of <laughs> beginning. <laughs> let's have it, let's have it a joke. Guys, sorry, I have COVID so I may cough here and there but I'm on the upward swing. I'm good to go, I'm not dying, um, but I may cough. So just know that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so let's start with you. You're the naturopath. I always love to start with you because you, you are, are the echelon of, of knowledge. So let's talk macros. What what are they? Yeah, macros. We're talking about proteins, fats, carbs. And in general, um, I don't tend to give specific macro advice because the dietary advice that I'm used to giving has more to do with what your health conditions are. So, you know, let's say you're anemic, right? I'm going to tell you which foods to eat to help boost your iron levels. If you have PCOS, if you have endometriosis, if you have acne, if you have certain conditions, that's what I'm going to tend to give you advice on versus this many fats, this much protein. And most of the time people are doing macros in the past, I've found um, really are doing them because they want to lose weight. And so with naturopathic medicine, I kind of work to treat the cause of what's going on. So most of the time that's thyroid imbalance, it's sex hormone imbalance, um, food sensitivities are huge where I send most of my people to you to figure out what to eat and how to not starve. So yeah, that's what macros are, right? Macronutrients versus micronutrients. So a lot of people when they talk about, oh, I have to eat this many grams of carbs or proteins or fats per day, this is what they're talking about. Yeah. So macro meaning the three large nutrients, like things you need to eat in larger quantities to survive, which is what Dr. K is talking about. The fats, the carbs, the um, proteins, those are things that are required for survival. And so when we hear that carbs are bad, right? Well, a macronutrient, which is necessary for survival, carbs is one of them. So I just want to make sure I point that out. Micronutrients are um, those nutrients you need in smaller doses still to survive. So your vitamins, your minerals, those are equally important, if not more important than the macros. Um, and they're often fallen by the wayside. But to Dr. Katie's point, most of the time you hear about macros because it's a weight loss method. And honestly, it's not. Just like the word diet doesn't mean to lose weight. Diet technically means what you are eating. Like, what is your diet? What are you eating to survive? We've turned it into this weight loss verbiage. And the same thing with macros. Macros means the major nutrients that should be in your diet for survival. We've turned it into another method of dieting. 
And so um, today I want to just kind of clarify what that ma what a macro is, which we've talked about, carbs, fats, proteins. Sometimes you're going to hear somebody mention water. Water is not technically a macro. Um, it is something vital to your survival, but it is not technically a macro. <clears throat> it's really just those three. Um, so like anything on earth, and Dr. Katie, you can um, give me your thoughts on this, but I think things are brought into practice with good intention. And then for some reason, the human experience likes to make it extreme and it gets a little out of whack. So when the macro concept for, for losing weight came into play, the reason it came into play, it was honestly to take away restriction. So ice cream has fat, carbs, and protein in it. So from a macro diet, it originally came into play. So you wouldn't have to restrict any one food, but it went in, in part of balance. You had so many macros you could eat in a day based on your activity level, your size, your, um, not, uh, not BMI. What am I trying to say? Basal metabolic rate. Um, right? Like there was all this calculation. We figured out what your best macro needs were. And then you could eat whatever you wanted inside of that range. Like that was the original intent. So if you wanted ice cream, great, but you could only have so much of it because you only had so much, so many macros you could eat in a day. So right. Dr. Katie, is that, is that kind of the same thing when macros first came out and this whole thing started? That was yeah. kind of the point. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of diets started out that way too. Extremely extreme like very black or white, like, you know, looking at the, um, what was the bacon diet? <laughs> oh, called? the cookie diet, the cabbage diet, the grapefruit diet, the yeah. bacon diet. Celery juice, right? All these like very extremes. But yes, that's how, to my understanding as well, yeah, started out. Yeah, so the nice part of the macro diet is it wasn't extreme. You could have whatever you wanted. You just had to have it, it fall within your limits, right? And then what happened was, is then all of a sudden it became where, okay, now only, not only are you counting macros, but they've got to be the healthiest of the macros. And then it started getting stricter and stricter and stricter. And it kind of fell away from the whole point of the entire thing. So macros, fats, carbs, and proteins, we all need them. How much we need is very dependent on your body type. There are three, where's my camera? There are three primary uh, body types. There you go. Three. Um, there is the ectomorph as the person who is naturally very thin. This is the person that they are, um, they struggle to gain weight. Their metabolism is very fast. They're generally very long limbed, small boned. Um, they, they do, generally don't think about food. This is the person who could go all day and food isn't even in their radar. And then they're like, oh yeah, I guess I could eat. And they could have one bite of something and be totally fine, which is part of the reason why they're so thin. That's the ectomorph. The ectomorph is that naturally thin person that the rest of the world loves to hate, but they have their own struggles. They want to gain weight. They want some yeah. curves. They want some muscle. Um, it is just as much of a challenge for them. It is for everyone else. So we need to stop hating on them. Um, they, they deserve as much sympathy as the rest of us. Then there is the um, uh, endomorph. Sorry. So this is where COVID's going to like sap my brain and I'm going to have to, have, have to help you <laughs> jump in, Dr. Katie. Uh, there's the endomorph. The endomorph is the one who tends to fall on the chubbier side. This is the one that is bigger boned. This is the one that tends to um, struggle to lose weight. Many of us think we're an endomorph and we're not. We're victimizing. We're not endomorphs. <laughs> there's a nice equal amount of everybody in this world. It's the ones that generally tend to run heavy. They have as children. Um, like I said, the bigger bones um, the bigger structure, somebody who, um, when they say, oh, well, I'm just big boned. No, they really are. <laughs> yeah. They really are big boned. Um, that is the endomorph. And then, um, metamorph, mesomorph, Me isn't it mesomorph? mesomorph. Isn't it? right. Mesomorph. I was like, I know I'm going to screw this up. Um, the mesomorph, honestly, this is my body style. I have to say I'm quite lucky. The mesomorph is somebody who tends to run muscular. This is somebody who gains weight easily, loses weight easily. Um, that body style is, is pretty athletic um, and generally gets to build muscle pretty easily. And so based on your body type, the amount of macros you need is going to differ. Based on your activity level, if you are athletic, if you, for example, are a UPS driver and you are moving all day long, lifting boxes, walking to doors, your macro needs are going to be very, very different. If you are a weightlifter versus a runner, your macro needs are going to be different. If you are like me and you are four foot 11 versus my boyfriend who's six, four, your macro needs are going to be very different. So 
the point of macros is the calculation and taking everything into consideration in one big picture to calculate what is your macro need. And then how strict you are with those macros is really up to you. How do people I'm know? Yeah, yeah. How do people know what their type is? Are there because I think we've all probably seen that Instagram ad from that guy with the short haircut and he's talking about different body types. And is there a quiz that's accurate? Do, is there a way that you tell your patients or clients like what their body type is? And yeah. So that's a great question. So I personally do not, I also do not work with macros. I am not. So because okay. of so much of what I do is around mindset, anytime you start calculating, calories, macros, anything diet related generally screws with the head. It, it, it causes guilt to step in. If you happen to you, eat too many macros, it screws with your head. So it, yeah, yeah. Do you use body typing at all? Like in your practice, even if it's not macro related? A little bit. I don't really talk to clients about it. Um, but based on what I know of them, when I get their history, if I see that they um, tend to run towards the endomorph style, I will run them lower on the carbohydrate macro um, and a bit higher on the fat macro. Um, they probably burn fat slower. Um, they're, they tend to be somewhat less active. And so the energy they need is slower burning rather than faster burning. And that's really the big difference between a carb and a fat from an energy perspective. Carbs are fast burning, so they're great for the athlete. Um, fat is slower burning, so they're great when you are um, not necessarily needing them for quick spurts of energy. And so um, I will kind of pay attention that, to that to see, okay, um, when I'm developing meal plans, I'm looking at calories and macros, but I don't actually discuss them with the client themselves. Okay. And can, are you born with these body types that you, as far as you know? You are, you are born with these body types and, and they can change, right? So, and a great example, he won't let me talking about this, but a great example is David. So David, uh, my boyfriend, he is an ectomorph. He is a tall, uh, long limbed, skinny dude. However, at the moment, he's probably gained a good 30, 50 pounds. And so he doesn't look like an ectomorph anymore. And so if you just met him now, you wouldn't think, okay, this is a naturally skinny guy. But yeah. if he put any effort into it whatsoever, he'd drop weight like a bandit <laughs> and he'd go right back to being skinny. Um, and that's how, you know, like he's an ectomorph and that is his body type. That is just who he is. Me, I, I'm born muscular. Um, I will always have muscular muscle, even if I stop working out and I start gaining, um, even when I was heavy, I had muscle. It's just how I'm built. I'll probably look pretty proportionate, even overweight because being a mesomorph, that that tends to be the mesomorph style. Okay. I remember you also talking like one of our earlier sessions about how your body type now is determined a lot by how much you exercised as a kid. So how does that, is that accurate? My remembrance of well, that? Your so metabolism is really affected by that, right? So like I started lifting when I was 11. I started, and I was an athlete um, from childhood on. So because of that, and this is a great, I'm now a great example. So I, um, was a lot leaner a few years ago when I was a group fitness instructor, right? So I taught so many classes a week, plus I did my own personal workouts. And so I exercised quite a bit. So fast metabolism. I did not have to pay as much attention to my diet. That's not true. I was always very focused on my diet, but I, I could be um, a lot more lenient because I moved so much. Well, now I don't teach any fitness classes and um, I'm at a computer a lot throughout the day, which is very different than my old lifestyle. So now I have to very seriously watch what I eat because the weight's wanting to come on. My metabolism is used to movement. It's gone decades. I'm 45 years old. I've been moving for 30 years, at least 35 years. And so my body knows movement and metabolism with movement. So without movement, my body just now wants to start packing on the weight. And I can very easily start looking like an endomorph if I don't pay attention to it, Got it. right? Because my body cool. wants movement and I'm not giving it to it as much as I had. Okay. Okay, cool. I don't mean to go on a little tangent there. I just wanted to clarify like all of that. So 
if you don't use macros so much, maybe what issues have you seen with your clients that have previously been on macro based diets? And, you know, what are you kind of fixing with them? Yeah. So, and I think the, the just to go back to the macro, since that's, this is about the macro diet is, is a great way. Like there is no one way to lose weight and there's no, I'm not gonna say there's no bad way to lose weight, but the macro is actually can be a very balanced, great way to lose weight. As long as you don't become obsessed, right? It's when we become obsessed that it, it's a problem where, okay, I'm constantly counting and I'm feeling guilty if I go outside my macro range. Like that is when all of a sudden food is still in control of how we feel about ourselves, about our self-confidence, our self-worth. That is when macros go wrong. However, as it was originally intended that I had stated, macros allow you to eat whatever the hell you want to. You know, you can have ice cream, you can have chocolate, you can have a beer, but you have to do it within portion because you want to hit, stay within a macro range. And that's what I like about the macros. I really do like that. The counting part of it's obnoxious. I don't have the patience for it, so I don't do it. But I do like that it doesn't lend towards restriction. It really lends towards balance and portion. And I think that's great. Yeah, I think that that's like really important with a lot of people with weight loss is this massive restrict, restrict, restrict in mindset. And then they feel that it's unsustainable because eventually they're going to want to have a beer or ice cream or birthday cake. You know, I mean, so yeah. I, I very much believe and I think you and I um, blunt and biased have agreed to on this like more, I think, than we thought we would have maybe. Um, but uh, just about how important it is that something is sustainable because no one can continue any one thing 100% perfectly their entire life. It's just not going to work. And so how do we lose weight and also keep it off and feel good about what we're doing instead of coming from the mindset of, oh, I can't eat this and I'm so restricted and there, you know, I can never live and I can't go out. I can't have friends. You know, that's just, I think that's one of the biggest problems. Yeah. Cause health is more than just your weight, right? There's yeah. social health, there's spiritual health, there's financial health. There's so many aspects to health. And so, um, I think as you're choosing your weight loss method and I posted actually on this earlier this week, but what is your definition of health and really understanding what your definition is? And then why is that your definition? Like, is that truly your definition or is that somebody else's that you feel obligated to follow? Um, so many times there's influencers that give their opinion on what health is. Um, wow. there are your family and your friends that give their opinion on what you, what health is, but what is your opinion? And then if you look at your life and what you're doing, are you actually doing what it takes to meet your definition of health? And that's where you get to understand is macros a good method for you. Um, if you can do macros without getting crazy about it, if you like the idea of not restricting the type of food you eat, but how much of it you eat Macros is a great way to go. And understanding macros is only one part of the equation. I want to go back to micros. The micronutrients are really what's going to uh, ensure your health, right? So the vitamins and the minerals come from the type of foods you eat. So if you're thinking macros, I can eat whatever I want to. So I'm going to make sure I'm having a whole hell of a lot of ice cream anytime I have carbs because that's what I want to have. Okay, but where are your micros coming in? Where are you right. getting your right? Your nutrients, because most of the micros, not all of them, most of them fall in the carb section because fruits, vegetables, grains, those are all carbs. And that's where a lot of the micros hang out. Yeah. yeah. So I think there does need to be a balance. For sure. And we, I think food quality used to be significantly higher than it is now. Um, with the depletion of nutrients in our soil, with pesticides and herbicides and insecticides used and sprayed in the soil, as well as on top of fruits and vegetables, a lot of the things that we think are healthy now, we're not actually getting that much out of anymore. Um, there is, and just to like kind of bring it back to something that one of us can do, micronutrient testing does exist. And there's testing that you can do in your serum, so from blood draws or there's intracellular micronutrient testing, which is a lot more rare, but there is a lab that allows you to, um, using microchip technology, it's this patented technology, they can tell you where your micronutrient levels are intracellularly, not just where things are floating around in your bloodstream today. 
So um, super helpful testing that exists out there to let you know where you're at. And sometimes it really is that simple of a fix. Yes, with weight loss, but also with any other kind of symptom that you're experiencing, because I'm sure you can talk to this too. Many people that are coming to you for weight loss also suffer from other things, fatigue, brain fog, joint pain. I mean, everything. I, I can't tell you how many, it's never just weight loss. No, for sure. Yeah. So um, I think some of you, and I would love it. We have a good number of um, viewers. So guys, throw questions in the chat. Like the, we're doing this for you. So um, yeah. anything we're not covering that you want to know. But one of the questions I'm sure people have is, okay, so how do I figure out my macros? <laughs> so there's a website. Um, I hope I still have it. I'm going to, let me see. Oh, I may have lost. I'll have to go find it again. There was a, a website that I really do like. Um, and it provides the... Um, I'll put it in the chat afterwards because I lost it, but it provides the formula. So truly everything is, is scientific, right? Basal metabolic rate is scientific. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's the amount of calories that are burned just surviving. So without movement, without exercise, just sitting here, having a conversation, breathing, our body is burning calories. And the majority of the calories that we burn throughout the day is our basal metabolic rate, is our is our just survival calories. And then we've got the few hundred calories that we burn through actual moving. Me just picking up my water bottle, right? Like that is going to burn calories. And then of course, if I were a UPS driver, I'm burning a hell of a lot more calories than somebody who's going to sit behind a desk in a customer service role on the phone. And so this formula will help you identify based on your basal metabolic rate, your activity levels, really what calories you should be at. And then based on that, then dividing it um, by macro and the macros. I mean, even if you go you know, to the old school where you know, you've got this range of how many macros you should have, um, understanding that if your activity level is higher, you're on the higher end range of the carb macro. And if your activity level is lower, then you're on the lower range of the carb macro. But then because you do need a certain amount of calories for health, if you are reducing your carbs, something else may need to go up, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. understanding it's not just about taking stuff away. It's finding right. the right balance. Yeah. And then the last thing I do want to say about that is once you do the science, pay attention to yourself. And Dr. Katie and I are broken records. We say this every single live stream. You are the expert on you. So once you've got a foundational starting place, like that's all we're trying to do is find you a starting spot. Start with what science says. And then how do you feel? What's your body doing? Are you losing right. weight? Are you exhausted in the afternoon? Are you feeling energized? Are you bogged down after meals? Are you sleeping well? Are you really feeling strong in your workouts? Like, how do you feel? That's going to tell you how close you are. And then you start to play, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We talk to you guys all the time about You've got to be your own best advocate. It's our job to listen to you, to pay attention to you. You are the expert on your health. We're the experts in our respective fields. But ultimately, you're 50% of the picture. And if somebody's told you to do stuff, if you've seen other providers, other nutritionists, other doctors, other dietitians, whoever it is for whatever your health concerns are, if you didn't feel better after the expected period of time that you should have, then you're not on the right track. And it's not right for you. So that's the whole reason why we started this podcast is really – to help people understand how to empower themselves with education. If something resonates with you, look into it. Come contact us, see us, and we'll figure out the best way to help you. That's the best kind of medicine and the best kind of healthcare is something that's individualized and specific to your unique needs. And that can only be discovered through what you tell us, right? And how you're feeling, as well as what the blood work says or the testing or, you know, and eventually, you should be better. If you're not better yet and you've been working at it for a long time, you're not on the right track and maybe you need to go down a different path. So maybe macros is the right thing. Maybe it's not. So um, one thing that I have noticed with some clients, because I do say you got to pay attention to your own body, but then yeah. they sometimes people can get in the constantly changing at that point and that's too much. So in mm -hmm. my opinion, I generally have people stick with something for a week to two weeks when they make a change. Dr. Katie, what's your recommendations on that? If somebody is like, oh, this isn't working, I'm going to try this. How long do yeah. you generally recommend they stick with the new thing before another new thing? 
It totally depends. Honestly, it really does. Like we, you and I had a mutual patient. She did something based off of my recommendations for six weeks and it did not get better, but we discovered that there was a reason for that. And so sometimes I've seen, I've seen on the same food sensitivity situation, you remove your foods, you're on the healing supplements that I've got you on omega sources based off of your particular needs. Some people are better and lose weight and lose their bloating and, and uh, reflux um, symptoms quickly. And so we know that we're on the right track. Other people, they really stick to it and adhere and it doesn't go away. It's rarer, but it really depends on their treatment. So like, you know, with food sensitivities, I say anywhere between four to eight weeks, you're on that protocol. Some docs say three months. Um, it, it depends on the practitioner and it depends on the type of treatment. So uh, with some supplements too, especially if they're herbal based, herbs do take a little while to build up in your system. So for particular things, especially things like regulating the menstrual cycle, I, that's at least a month, if not three to nine months of you taking something consistently following particular diet recommendations. Uh, but it, it really, it really does depend. Nothing is near to nothing is better overnight. Right. So I think from a macro perspective, as you're trying to figure out your macros, um, definitely give it at least one week. I recommend two. So when you're trying to figure out what you should, like what's working for you energetically as well as weight loss wise, specifically with macros, and you realize, okay, so this is what the science says, but I'm not losing weight. Or this is what the science says, and I'm really feeling tired, right? And you want to switch up and say, I'm going to up the carbs, or I'm going to down the carbs, or I'm going to up the protein or down the protein or anything, pick a new set of macros and then stay there for two weeks. Don't start changing it every two or three days. You're never going to figure out what's best for you because it takes the body some time to adapt and understand what's going on. Yeah. So from a macro perspective, I recommend two weeks every time you make a change if what you're trying isn't ideal for what you're looking for to do. Cool. That's good to know. I think for a lot of people, they're like, well, I haven't lost 10 pounds yet. And it's been five days of this diet, right? right. <laughs> That's not always the, the way that it works. I mean, if you're losing weight that fast, guys, it's probably water retention and bloating and like other sort of like imbalances in between your bloodstream and the extracellular area. So that's not fat. Um, but sometimes you feel like you're overweight and it's been bloating all along and then you're better after we figure out what causes you to bloat. And sometimes it's macros and sometimes it's specific foods. Sometimes it's stress. Sometimes it's hormones. Um, but in general, yeah, you got to stick to things for a little while, which we're all human beings. Compliance is difficult, <laughs> but right. if you're ready to change it and you're kind of sick of how you're feeling, um, then, you know, you got to stick to what your professional says. Yep. As long as you feel better after a certain period of time. So maybe that would be something good. It's like, just make sure that you're super clear with your providers, what amount of time you're supposed to expect betterment and do your best until that period of time. And if it's not right, then tell them it's not right. If they say keep doing it, then maybe that's when you get a second opinion. Yeah. And when it comes to weight loss, guys, I always remember that the scale is only one point. So many people don't lose a lot of weight on the scale, but they lose a lot of inches. So have more than one point of success and don't let it just be the scale because you, I had one client, she lost 10 pounds, but she lost like 20 some odd inches. I had another client lose 10 pounds and she only lost like five inches. So the bodies are very different and the scale said the same thing for both of them. And they had very, very different weight loss experiences in regards to how their body changed. So five, you don't have to measure 5,000 things. I measure, because I'm a woman, I measure my thigh, my inner thigh, my hips, my waist. That's about it. And that's how I can really pay attention, how do my clothes fit? And it's more than just the scale. So because we are talking macros and we are talking like, what are they? And most people do it for dieting reasons. Um, and, and Dr. Katie's bringing up the fact that you may not see results right away. Just keep in mind, results can be more than that scale. So pay attention to how you look in the mirror, pay attention to how your clothes fit, pay attention to measurements. And then also what is that scale saying? It's just one piece of evidence of your success. Yeah. Well, 
that's all I got. Nobody asked any questions. We still got six viewers. You guys, anything that you want on this last minute before we uh, say ciao for another two weeks? <laughs> it was fun to have so many people watching. Hopefully you guys found this valuable. And uh, don't forget that as on the rewatch or whatever, you can always ask questions there as well. And Dr. Katie and I always follow up on those and answer those questions also. Yeah, for sure. Follow awesome. us on social media and all the things, and you can direct message us there. Our contact information is listed on our website and on our social media pages. So um, yours is officially Love Yourself Lean everywhere, right? No, Love You Lean on Instagram, uh, Love Yourself Lean. Uh, love You Lean is my website and my Instagram, Love Yourself Lean everywhere else. Cool. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just inclusive natural medicine everywhere. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks, Theodore. Um, and guys, I come back and I will have that website that's got the actual calculations, the scientific stuff on there. I'll add that to the comments. So you can always come back and see that if you're interested in that. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Have a good one, everybody.